The project started probably about four years ago. I had an exhibition in New York, a solo exhibition, and the title was Dasein, which is German for being there, being present. And the works in the show were very much about medium specificity. So paint has a chromatic nature and a physical nature. Uh, they're made from precious and non-precious materials, so gold, diamond, dust, silver, platinum, pigments uh, mixed with a the binder. They're layered paintings that shift chromatically when you walk around and engage with them. And I gave a talk to a group of uh, scientists and researchers from Memorial Sloan Kettering, and there was a question and answer session at the end, and one of the people in the, in the, in the audience kind of raised their hand and said, so, Basically, I'm looking at just paint. Really, what I asked him was, well, it, it seems like your, your paint or your art is the paint. And uh, I might have offended him with this, uh, with the question. Um, but he said, uh, well, yeah, that's kind of right. My art is the paint. And afterwards, um, I started talking to this individual, it was Dan Heller, and we just kind of immediately hit it off. And he invited me to his lab the next day, and I went to the lab. And he started to talk to me about uh, some of the things he was doing in the lab using carbon nanotubes for biosensing and biodelivery. Um, I'd heard of carbon nanotubes before, but I really had never seen one, knew as much about them, and he was telling me about their unique optical and physical properties. I had been working with carbon nanotubes for about 15 years now. Uh, we wanted to use these to make uh, sensors to detect cancer, where we can make potentially a a sensor that is implanted in the body to detect uh, cancer at the earliest stages. I had always been focused in the lab of, of learning about these properties and, and had the benefit of using um, new instruments that um, could, could measure these things. These materials aren't really available to the public and really even to scientists in the way that we want. I found that with working with uh, Joseph, we could um, potentially make these materials uh, accessible where not just uh, one, they could be accessible to the public. People could learn about um, what these things are and potentially create a demand for a paint maybe. That, um, and if there's a demand for a paint, maybe um, they would be even more accessible to uh, scientists to be able to use them. So when I started to work with, uh, with Dan's lab and create these small paintings um, with carbon nanotubes, uh, we were imaging them and and uh, in this mouse imager that Dan has in the lab that Photon made. And you know, some people saw it and were like, well, I want to see these paintings. And so they actually saw the exact painting. They're like, well, I didn't see, like what color is the, is the infrared? What, what color is the infrared that I'm looking at? And I said, well, you can't see the infrared. That's the kind of the limitation of our eyes. The fact that carbon nanotubes are used uh, in these paints, it gives a different perspective. It shows that there's other things than the visible that exist. And this is so true in science. The universe that we see now is, is you know, we only see the visible part of the universe. But when you look with instruments, including infrared cameras, uh, you see a completely different picture. I think for me, my art, um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do with my art is to create work that fits in the, in the history of, of art in general. So when I think back of, of art, there's a larger conversation. So I think about the caves of Lascaux and Altamira and what the role of that art was. About a year or so after working with, starting to work with Joseph Cohen, I realized that um, it would really accelerate uh, these developments uh, if Joseph was, inter it was uh, able to interact with more people in the nanocarbons field. And so I invited him to come to the uh, Electrochemical Society meeting in uh, 2016 in New Orleans and just introduced him during my talk as this, this nanocarbon artist and uh, introduced him to a, to a few of the, uh, to the, to the people in attendance at the meeting. And um, to my delight, uh, several of those uh, researchers started working with him and uh, including Bruce Weissman and Jim Tor and others and really uh, gave uh, different scientific interactions uh, to this uh, to this work. So I've been fortunate to work with Dan for about four years now and uh, Dan's a bit of a rock star and kind of has has pointed me and guided me into what I feel are, are kind of you know fruitful paths. 
having these uh, instruments now available helps uh, these uh, materials become useful in, in biology and medicine and hopefully, uh, and, and hopefully we'll see uh, clinical devices uh, in the future.